I brought along a box with me. This is a box of letters. I don't even know how old it is. I've been keeping this box for a long time. Frankly, I can't remember the last time I've actually put anything in this box because I'm not sure we actually write letters anymore. Does anyone write letters anymore? I mean, there was a time when letters was the way we communicated, right? Like, here's a letter with my real address on it from a friend who's a missionary in the Philippines, right? There's notes or letters in here um, from my kids to me. Here's a letter from, from my son to me. I don't even know exactly when it was written. Hey, Dad, and he has some words he wants to write to me. Letters are very case-specific. They're, they're written from a specific person to a specific person for a specific reason, right? That's the way letters work. Now keep that in mind as we turn to the text we want to look at in this video. Do you know what the most searched for Bible verse is on the internet? It's Jeremiah 29 11. You've probably heard of it. Jeremiah 29 11 says this, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a future and a hope. Here's the problem, however. Even though Jeremiah 29 11 is the most searched for passage on the internet, it's also one of the most misused and misapplied verses as well. Why is that? Because we don't understand the context. The situation is this. God's people have been carried away into exile. If you're not super familiar with your Old Testament, here's the way it works. So there was David was king, and then his son Solomon was king. Well, after Solomon's kingship, Israel split into two kingdoms. The northern kingdom typically went by the name uh, Israel, and the southern kingdom typically went by the name Judah. So they split into north and south, um, and the northern kingdom fell to the Assyrian Empire in about 722 BC. The southern kingdom, Judah, hung on for uh, another little bit of time and eventually fell to the Babylonian Empire in about 606 BC. And uh, when Babylon took over, they gathered up a bunch of the Israelites and they put them in chains and carried them back to Babylon and settled them throughout the towns of Babylon. Some people got to stay back in Israel and Jeremiah was one of those. So you have Jeremiah and a handful of other people being left in Israel and you have others being carried away to Babylon. Well, Jeremiah 29 11 is part of a letter. That's right, a letter written to real people living in real places. God decides to send a letter through Jeremiah to those who have been carried away into exile. And the purpose of the letter is actually to give them advice and help them understand their exile and what they're supposed to do while they're there. That's the context of Jeremiah 29 11. Now, notice the way Jeremiah 29 11 begins. It begins with this word, for. For, whenever you see the word for in the Bible, you should realize, okay, that's connected to the preceding verses, and it's explaining something about that. So we have to look at Jeremiah 29.10 to understand exactly what Jeremiah 29.11 is getting at. Jeremiah 29.10 says this. This is what the Lord says. When, get this, 70 years are completed. Do you get that? Like, 70 years. You're going to be in captivity in exile for 70 years. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, God says, I will come to you, and I will fulfill my gracious promise to you to bring you back to this place, bring you back to Jerusalem, bring you back to your homeland. And then he goes on and says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. So this letter gives them advice on how they should live, and it says they're going to live in exile for 70 years. One of the things that means is most of the original people who were sent into exile aren't going to return home. They're going to die in Babylon. They're never going to see the temple again. They're never going to return to their homeland. That's going to be left to their kids and their grandkids. Seventy years is a long time. Another important thing to uh, keep in mind as we reflect on Jeremiah 29 11 is it's written to Israel, not to us. And this is true with the whole Bible. We're, we're not the original audience for any of the Bible books. The Bible was originally written to somebody else. But that doesn't mean it's not written for us. And so as we reflect on Jeremiah 29, 11, we need to keep in mind that even though it's not written to us, it was written for us. And it, it was done so not in the sense that the original promise is for us. We're not the ones who are going to return to Israel after 70 years. That's the specific kind of prosperity and blessing this text has in mind. And that's just not us, right? It doesn't promise 
a new car or a big house or a vacation home in the mountains. That's not what it's promising and to take it that way is to completely misuse it. Nevertheless, it still has a message for us and that message is found really in the theology that kind of underlies what the text actually says. What is, the, what is that theology? Well, that theology is things like this, like God is incredibly faithful to his promises because we know from history that God fulfilled these words, that Israel did return after 70 years, that a new kingdom arose and defeated the Babylonians and they had a different foreign policy and they sent the Jews back to their homeland and God kept his promise. Related to that, we also see God's sovereignty, his power, that uh, God is in control of history and God works things out and he knows the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning and therefore he controls all of this. And one of the things this ultimately means for us is that God's trustworthy, that we can trust him with our life regardless of what we're going through. Um, the people who originally received this letter, most of them were going to die in captivity, but God was still going to fulfill his purposes. And so whatever you're going through, whether it feels like blessing or not, whether it feels uh, good or not, don't doubt God's goodness. Don't doubt God's power. And don't doubt God's faithfulness. God will achieve his purposes and God will ultimately bring good to you and to his people as he fulfills his purposes for us through Jesus, the Messiah. If you would like some help uh, just studying the Bible and making sure you're reading it in context, I have a little resource on my website just called The Number One Key to Being Changed by the Bible, and it will help you learn how to read the Bible with both head and heart. You can check that out at johnwhitaker.net. I will put a link to that down in the notes below. Hey, thanks for joining me for the 5-Minute Bible Study. If you haven't already, I would encourage you just to go ahead and click subscribe right up here. And if you want to check out some other videos, I will put some other videos up on the screen as well. God bless you guys, and we will see you in the next video.